Last week, we sailed into the Gulf of Fonseca and made landfall on Isla Contraguita in the country of El Salvador. What are you doing? I'm swimming. It's like a an endless lap pool here with the current. You can just swim and not go anywhere. So there's um, decently large tides here in the Gulf of Fonseca where we are, and it's uh so about 10 foot tides. So we're side on to the breeze right now. So we're laying more with the current. So I think we might go to shore this evening, try and find some pupusas. Papusa. For somebody's birthday. Who's is that? I don't know. But a papusa is what everyone really wants to know. <laughs> now, a papusa is kind of like a round. It's like a filled tortilla. Yeah, it's like a stuffed tortilla. They kind of make it round, stuff it, and then flatten it out. Um, pretty tasty. The Gulf of Fonseca is a pretty unique place, bordering three countries and home to more than a dozen islands of varying sizes. Here at Conchahuita, one of the larger islands of El Salvador, the steep hillsides were a mixture of jungle and farmland, and the small fishing village was a friendly, welcoming place. Though it seemed very rarely visited by foreigners, and we felt like a bit of a novelty visiting here by sailboat. Gonna go get some papusa. Papusa! papusa. Some clouds back there. See if we're gonna get some rain. It out. After pulling our dinghy up on shore, we watched as the fishermen used logs to roll their heavy launches up across the beach. Then we went up to see what was happening in town. <laughs> as it turned out, tonight was not Papusa night but we did find some great local food. Okay, this will be a short one. <laughs> so it was an interesting evening after we thankfully got back to the boat. Had a, had a really good evening in town, sampling different street foods, chatting with the locals. It got pretty windy this evening. We saw the storm clouds pass over. We didn't really get any rain, but pretty choppy and windy. Row back to the boat. I don't think we've been back to the boat for more than 20 minutes and it seemed like we were getting a bit closer to land and the anchor alarm started to go off so we hauled up anchor yeah we'll tell you more tomorrow mm. you know, how'd you sleep all right a bit windy last night very windy it's uh oh, we're gonna get the heck out of dodge here in a few minutes this is the second anchorage we moved to last night after we ended up dragging anchor and got really close to shore. Luckily we were on the boat at the time and our drag alarm went off. They were probably good one, one and a half meter wind waves. Wind waves coming up. Blowing, uh, a lot know, of chop. 25 knots at least. 25 to 30. I think the highest we've got recorded here is about 26, but it's just real strong gusts. So, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's a bit stronger. And I think it's going to blow like this for another four or five days according to the forecast. So we're going to move on over to the island of Mangera. So a little bit of uh, update on what's going on here. There's a really strong gale coming through the Tuanapec right now, about 45, 50 knots. The wind is continuing down through the, what they call the Papagayos. And we're expecting 20 to 30 knots here for the next few days non-stop. Uh, so we want, and that's out of the northeast to east. So we want to be as kind of southerly anchorage as possible. 
There's one over there on Mangara. We're gonna. It's pretty try. good. Yeah. We're going to. We do have the dinghy off the back, which we towed around because it was at night when we we dragged, and we're gonna tow it across. It's four miles over. Um, we'd like to put it on deck, but it's probably more dangerous right now to attempt to get the dinghy on deck in those winds. Especially, we're kind of behind a point here and it's super gusty, like it'll be kind of calm and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get like a 25, 30 knot gust coming around the points. I think mostly we need to put the running back stays out for our stay cell. That'll help brace the masks. We're just going to go with the stay cell today. We we're thinking about um, a double reef main, but it sounds like too much work. It should be a little sense. downwind run all the way too, so no need to have messages. Well, I've been cutting across this channel, which is probably going to be extremely windy because it's funneling through this channel. We're gonna walk into the town of Mangera, we think, right? Yeah. This is, we're on the south side right now. There's some strong winds blowing northeast and east for the next four or five days. The town's over on the eastern side of the island, so we're gonna walk over there. We hear it's about an hour walk. We'll, we'll see there's a little trail up and over the hill here. On the trail. All right. Is this the trail? I think this is the trail. So generally for most of our exploration, we we'll bring a backpack or two as the backpack with all the our camera gear and so on in it, or most of it. And a lot of times we'll put veggies and stuff if we buy that as well. Today we're expecting to maybe get a few more veggies. So Hillary's also got a backpack there with a hydration pack in there full of water. We also brought our boat documentation. So we're still not officially checked into El Salvador. Been trying to get a hold of someone we know there's a port captain here. They haven't responded on the radio. So I might go visit their office. And then uh, Emily's got nothing. She's got her own. I've got nothing. Her own. I've own. bought a dry bag because. Wait, did you, wait, wait. Okay, yeah, we did. Because we didn't get any of that. Has the story been told yet? No, it hasn't been told. <laughs> Emily has a story to tell. Well, last night we figured it'd be a nice idea to go and explore the beach. But there's a shore break. I love one of you. And on trying to get back out to the boat, we may have sunk the dinghy. <laughs> <laughs> but I took my phone without a dry bag, so my phone got a little bit wet. How is the phone doing? It's working, but I figured to avoid further issues, I would now carry a dry bag whenever going in the dinghy. <laughs> what what Emily fails to realise is that with salt water, the problem will not will not show up for a few more weeks. <laughs> I just have the picture of you guys still sat in a dinghy <laughs> but it's full like, of water, like looking around hmm. like... <laughs> what next? It's kind of still paddable, I guess, but... <laughs> Big landslide here. You get some arrows for the detour around the landslide. The detour, might be. <laughs> the path to town was quite scenic, winding through forest, along the beach, and then up one huge climb to a pass cut through a big hill. When I was a kid, I had to walk over mountain tops and ravines and across landslides and around halfway around a big island just to get to school it was a hard life B 
Beyond the trees and the fields, town finally came into view, along with the local fishing fleet, all out on the water in their launches. As we walked into town, we passed by a trash collection truck, which was a rare and welcome sight. Lots of farm animals, and then found our way to the waterfront and went in search of the port captain. After first being directed to the military office, the officers there pointed us in the right direction to the port captain and immigration. Y la salida de immigration, Alright, that was the afternoon walk. Warm. Very hot. The morning walk was good. It was morning. Morning walk is nice. Afternoon walk. A lot of sun. Very it was hot. hard work. Still. <laughs> it was hard work. It was a run between the shaded spots. How's the water here? Oh. Very nice and cool. Better than it has been, not as warm. Could be a little bit colder. Despite the long walk into town, being anchored on the other side of the island was pretty nice. We were totally protected from the wind and away from town. It was just us, some beautiful island views, and a small fishing village on the beach. Whoa! Paved road. Day two, walk into town. We did our immigration yesterday, but the Freezing guy cold. that does the zarpe, the boat check-in, was not there. So you have to do that still. We've been here five, six, seven days now, and we only officially got checked in yesterday. Well, 50% checked in. We got our visas stamped, but the boat's mm -hmm. not legally here. Yep. And nobody really seemed to care. We were trying pretty hard everywhere, the radio, even in town here. And there's a bit of work just to get someone to check us in. So where are we off to now, guys? Festival. Festival of fish. Are we going to eat? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. We haven't been very successful in finding food in our no. South. No, no. I want to, challenge. I really want to drink because I'm thirsty. A very cute little town here, Saturday today, and sounds like some people are having a good old time. Yeah. Oh, it's music and stuff. festival with families cooking up their special seafood dishes. 
we were surprised that we were not only welcomed in and included in the festivities as outsiders, but also that it was a completely free event. Just a nice little get together for the local community. We are now officially 100% checked into El Salvador. So we can take our yellow flag down. We are no longer in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> a long time. A while. Been here a week or so. Place worth visiting. I would suggest this is a place you could spend the summer. Oh, this is an awesome place. Lots of islands to go between. Beautiful, nice anchorages. Nice towns. Yeah. Big towns, little towns. So plenty of stuff if you wanted to spend all summer here instead of a marina or something. This is a very nice place. Mm. Nice people. Today we went into town after the festival, went to back to the Port Captain Immigration Office. We got our cruising permit to be in El Salvadorian waters. That was 30 bucks for a 30 day permit, 30 US dollars. And then we'll have to go back there to get our international Zarpe when we check out and that will be 40 bucks. We're here, we're official. And it was like 10 bucks for us to check for visas. $10 oh, each for visas, yeah. except for Emily. Mine was free. Emily got a free visa. She Only didn't need a tourist card. because they were card. afraid that she was going to colonize them. Because <laughs> I'm special here. That is a really nice sky, you got to say that. It is very nice. There we go. Doesn't look like the sails are set very well. well there's no wind here. It's just, whoa, whoa, it's just whoa. puffs coming from every which direction. And we tried to sail off anchor, so. So yeah, why don't we go and jibe that, uh, sorry, tack that. Let's do whatever the hell we do with that head sail. Well, we sailed off anchor here at Guerrero, which is the south side of Isla Manguera. We're headed around to anchor off town. That's what we need. Motor? A boat that has a motor. While we had loved the isolated anchorage on the southern side of the island, we were eager to visit town in the evening, which was not really possible with the long hike back to the boat. Anchored right off town, we paddled to shore for some dinner, taking our trash with us since we had seen a trash collection earlier in the week. She making them a bit? Mm -hmm. so what was it? She has two tortillas basically, you were saying? No, it's like yeah. one, and then okay. fill it up, and then make oh, a then ball make of a meat, ball. and then cover it, yeah. and then flatten it, yeah. 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 That's all for this time. Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and hit the bell so you get notified of new episodes. Until next time, adios! Got some nice shadows here, people. We look like witches. Witches? You do, yeah. <laughs> very very traumatic right. evening. Is that working? <laughs> you gotta go to a bathroom break on the trail. Yep. No toilet paper here, it's just the leaves or the long grass. Yeah, you've just gotta use what's available, a rock, you know. We're going on an adventure. <laughs>